glad you could join me again today. Uh, part of my job this morning was uh, sweeping around the house, and of course then I had to uh, take my broom and knock down a few spider webs. It's amazing how they can find a, a place just you don't even realize they're there and all of a sudden you can see them through the shimmer of the light they can be just almost anywhere can't they the bible says they even make their home in the king's palaces but you know i don't think uh, prince charles spends a lot of time knocking down cobwebs well my devotion this morning followed that same path so when that happens i know i need to pay attention and see what god is telling me we're well, using a, a spider web as his illustration even after i'd done all that housework Spurgeon came back to the spider web and he used it to compare it to a hypocrite. His first main point was that the web is meant to catch prey and how easily people fall for the beauty of the web, the enticement from the enemy. They fail to look past the intricate pattern. They look at how pretty it is, what are trappings the enemy has put out and they step right into that web of deceit and they're caught before they know it. And they fall for that trap and the outcome is never good. That spider is waiting in the wings, isn't he? Well, I like the way that Spurgeon described the prey. He says, custom, reputation, praise, advancement, and other flies are the small game which hypocrites take in their nests. Well, sometimes we think that only the foolish or the rebellious are going to get caught up in a trap. But many times we can get caught up as well by just our own ideas, our, our prideful desires, or maybe greed. Any motive that is sourced in self or pride is prey for the spider's web. And he's out there, the enemy is out there waiting to catch us. And that's why we need to be carefully guarding our heart, keeping ourselves walking in the spirit, judging our thoughts, weighing ourselves as we talked about a few weeks ago, and weighing our actions by God's word so we can see the web before we get stuck in it. Anyway, Spurgeon went on to say that the spider web is a marvel of skill, and truly it is, isn't it? Don't you just love seeing the beauty of one in the morning light with the, the dew dripping from every strand? And yet you know, and I know, that no matter how beautiful it is, there is danger lurking. And it's the same way with a hypocrite. They can be bright and shiny and beautiful, and they might sound so pleasing and alluring, but the danger lurks behind every smile. Here's a bit of ugly about a spider's web. Spurgeon says the entire web comes from the creature's own abdomen. And it reminds me of the scripture where Job said, they conceive mischief and bring forth vanity and their belly prepareth deceit. It's not a very pretty sight, is it? Spurgeon then said that the bee gathers wax from flowers, but the spider sucks no flowers, and yet she springs out her mater material to any length. Even so, hypocrites find their trust and hope within themselves. Their anchor is forged on their own anvil and their cable twisted by their own hands. They lay their own foundation and hew out the pillars of their own house, disdaining to be the debtors of the sovereign grace of God. If you've ever dealt with a hypocrite, you know that this is true. Their whole religion is based on their self. There's no beauty there, just a sinister web of deceit as they seek to suck in those who would come to their side, join their cause, or create whatever havoc they want to create. And while we might fear being caught into the web of the hypocrite and maybe even grow weary with the struggle with one, Spurgeon reminds us that a spider's web is very frail. While it's most marvelously designed, it is not enduringly made. One sweep with a housewife's broom and it's gone. And mine were all gone this morning. Hypocritical, hypocritical cobwebs, Spurgeon wrote, will soon come down when the broom of destruction begins its purifying work. And he makes one more point about the hypocritical cobwebs. They are not to be endured in the Lord's house. God will clean house. He will see to it that the webs and those who spin them will be destroyed forever, Spurgeon says. So here are a few warnings for us and even a blessing. Let's be sure that we are not guilty of being a hypocrite. Do you know the definition? It's someone who claims or pretends to have a certain belief about what is right, but behaves in a way that disagrees with those beliefs. 
It's a false appearance of virtue or religion. It preaches one thing and does another. And I like this description. It's a person who expects the rest of the world to live up to their standards, but doesn't feel obliged to do the same. And we see so much of that today, do we not? You know, Jesus had no reservation in condemning hypocrites. He called them vipers, said they were full of dead men's bones, uncleanness, and iniquity. And hypocrites love to judge and condemn. They want to be seen as great and powerful, but behind closed doors, their true colors show. If they're put under pressure, they will rage and cry and threaten and demand to have their way. The mercies of kindness and patience, uh, honesty and humility are not woven into their web. So don't fall for their pernicious ways. That's a really old world word. It means to have a quality of killing or destroying or injuring. And that is exactly the goal of the spider and his web or the hypocrite and his, his doctrine. God's word warns us saying false prophets will come and weave a web of deceit. 2 Peter 1 verses 2 Peter 2 verses 1 to 3 says, And many will follow their pernicious ways, the ways of killing and destroying, by reason of whom the way of truth is evil spoken of. Through covetousness they will, with feigned words, make merchandise of you. They will take advantage of you. So don't let that happen. How can you protect yourself? You need to know God's word. You need to walk daily with him and in his spirit, judging yourself, weighing yourself, and not fall for every appealing word or cunning, crafty design. Look, examine, test the spirits. The words of God and the words of fellow believers taste sweet. They do not plant suspicion or mistrust. They do not speak against others or try to pull you to their side, but they point you to the Bible and to God's Spirit speaking to your heart. Remember the analogy of the source of the bee and the source of the spider? God's words come with sweetness, but the hypocrite's word boil up from a belly of iniquity. And don't fear the hypocrite. His web is frail. He cannot stand alongside the power of God's word. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, but don't fear him. Why? Because God will clean house. No word that's uh, spoken against the Lord will stand. Dear friend, be sure you are resting your soul on something stronger than a spider's web. I'll see you next week.